What's up sports fans, my name is Jake and welcome back to Game Day Eats. For those rookies just joining us, I'm here to bring you the local food and beer favorites of the host city playing in this week's Monday Night Football game and sharing the recipes so that you can host or show up to your get-togethers and be the MVP of the night. So sit back and relax, this is Game Day Eats. So the main difference between deep dish pizza and most other forms of pizza is that, as the name implies, the crust is deep, which makes a thick crust that resembles a pie more than a flatbread. Something to note is that even though the entire pizza is very thick, in a traditional Chicago-style deep dish pizzas, the crust itself is thin to medium in thickness, not in height. Our week two matchup has the Seattle Seahawks coming into town to face the Chicago Bears, and that means that we're making a Chicago style deep dish pizza. One thing I did to speed up the process was buy pre made pizza dough from my local grocery store for only three bucks. It still has to rise, so we'll do that process now. Something we like to do is cook one part of the recipes because in reality, who has time to make everything from scratch when you're trying to get that prime spot on the couch? The part we're building is the sauce, so let's take a look at what it takes. Two tablespoons unsalted butter, one small onion, three quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon dried oregano, a half teaspoon crushed red paper flakes. Now this is optional, but highly recommended. Three garlic cloves, minced, one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, and a quarter teaspoon of granulated sugar. Now by no means am I a professional chef or someone with a lot of kitchen space, so I make do. I'm using a cast iron skillet to house the pizza and to give the height I need in order to create the deep dish effect. You can use a baking dish or something that can be used in the oven with decent height. Now I did a lot of research to find who the original chef pizza maker, baker, whatever you call someone who makes pizza. But I didn't find who that was, but I did find that there was an official Chicago cultural historian by the name of Tim Samuelson. And he says there isn't enough documentation to determine who really invented the Chicago style deep dish pizza. So we'll just go with that. Something to note is that the thick layer of toppings used in the deep dish pizza requires longer baking time, which could burn the cheese or other toppings if they are layered like most other pizzas. Instead, the toppings are assembled upside down. The crust at the bottom is covered with cheese and genuinely sliced mozzarella, followed by different meats like pepperoni or sausage. Other toppings like onions, mushrooms, and bell peppers can also be thrown in. The sauce also joins the party up top, but sometimes people can add Parmesan cheese on top of the sauce. Whatever you want, this is your pizza and everyone else gets to eat it. The beer we found that a lot of Chicagoans love is Goose Island's Bourbon County Stout. And while I'm not a fan of stouts, I will always try a beer recommendation. So now that we finally have our pizza and our stout ready, it's time to taste. The Seattle Seahawks come to the Windy City for the first time since 2012, looking to grab their first win of the season after a loss to the Broncos in week one. The game was back and forth all day, but the offense really couldn't do anything even with Case Keenum's three interception unveiling in the Broncos orange uniform. On the defensive side of the ball, they got three interceptions. And it seems that the Emerald City isn't missing their Legion of Boom squad as much as the fans thought they would. Now, Earl Thomas did get one of those picks and deep down the fans really know that he wants to be in Dallas making those interceptions. But if he keeps performing for a team, he can stay. From the stats point of view, some could be concerned that they only had one sack last week, but keep in mind that pressure leads to turnovers and it seems Seattle was able to apply enough to turn Case Keenum into a diamond. Now the question is, can the defense apply enough pressure to second year quarterback Mitch Trubisky, who was sacked four times in the season over? And now to the Chicago Bears, who 
sorry, Bear fans, we really have to talk about this. And they had a meltdown of Atlanta proportions in Green Bay. They were leading 20 to three with three minutes and 37 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And they allowed Aaron Rodgers to do what Aaron Rodgers does and score three unanswered touchdowns in the fourth quarter. The bigger concern over the defensive collapse is that the Bears offense could not do anything productive on their side of the field. Two field goals under 35 yards and a two yard run in by Trubisky won't cut it. And they can't rely on Khalil Mack getting pick sixes every week. The Bears defense were able to get some turnovers and did also get four deep yardage sacks with the help of the coverage in the secondary. And they're playing another agile Super Bowl winning quarterback in Russell Wilson. So the preparations between last week and this week should remain relatively the same on defense. And as we did last week, we also have another first year head coach with Matt Nagy coming in from the Kansas City Chiefs as the offensive coordinator, which we really didn't see much of Sunday night. Now, last week, my prediction was way off, but none of us are really perfect. So looking to right the ship, I'm taking Seattle coming into the Bear Cave and stealing a win from the home crowd, 24 to 14. Another week and another meal for your gatherings. Subscribe and watch next week as we make the Tampa native Cuban sandwich when the Pittsburgh Steelers head to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers for week three's Monday Night Football. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the field. I will say, that's the best deep dish I've ever had. Really? I've had quite a bit, yeah. Oh, great.